As you know, Podular Modcast, as always, is brought to you by the lovely folks at Patchworks. And I think it's about time we go through the used and vintage section on patchworks.com, P-A-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.com, and look what kind of new cool stuff has showed up since we last visited. And right off the bat, I see some pretty great stuff. The uh, the Chase Bliss CXM, uh, those things are pretty cool. And I believe those have pre, like you can, you can do presets on those faders and click a button and I think they move into place so that's always fun oh well here we go right off the bat some really cool stuff we've got uh, used Roland TR09 uh, those things are fun all sorts of really cool used Roland stuff um, I mean the Scorp Pyramid that thing I've always wanted to try that thing out the uh, the 1010 blue box all the 1010 stuff is super cool the modules and the standalone Ooh, there's a noodler those are uh, pretty wild sequences. A subharmonicon, man, there's a lot of cool stuff. A bunch of Pulp Logic stuff, uh, some Pittsburgh modules. But the real question is, is that, uh, is that Octopad still here? You know I've been wanting that Octopad for a while. Uh, oh, cool. The little uh, uh, Korg K oscillators. These things are goofy, but they're pretty fun. I had one in, uh, in grad school. This was when I was first starting to get into synths and that thing just blew my mind. And then once I got into, you know, bigger, badder synths, I realized that it was not quite a toy, but pretty close. Um, oh shit, an old chaos pad, a bunch of mixers, um, Volca Beats. I used the Volca Beats a lot back before I uh, got into modular. Really, really cool little drum machine. Ableton Push, those things are pretty cool from what I have heard. Um, but yeah, is, is it still here? I'm not seeing the, the Octopad used mini peg 135. That's a great deal. That is a really, really cool module. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Ooh, there's immutable instruments, blades, woggle bug. Everybody needs a woggle bug in their system. Yep. There it is. The Octopad. It's still, it's still available. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, somebody get this and let me live vicariously through you. I really, really want it, but I can't afford it. Um, alternatively, if you don't want to get it yourself, you could buy it for me. And um, if that happens, you can just send me a message for my, uh, you can just send me a message asking for my mailing address and I'll happily, I mean, I'll pay for shipping. Um, ooh, used Korg MS-10. Yeah, look, at, there's all sorts of really cool stuff. I mean, I can't go through all of this, but you know who can? You can. So go ahead and click that link in the show description, P-A-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.com. Before we stop talking about Patrick's though, let's check out their events page. This, I mean, this is coming up this weekend, Sunday, October 15th, the Synth Sound Bath Spooky Edition hosted by Leany. This is uh, this sounds pretty cool. So if you're in the Seattle area this Sunday, go bathe in some spooky sounds. And as always, thank you to Patchworks for their continued support of Podular Modcast. Hello and welcome back to Podular Modcast. My name is Tim Held. This week we have Austin Carnes, aka R. Benny, back on the show. I think this is the fifth time, maybe? But Austin's always a good guest. We get deep, we get goofy, we talk synths. Just an all around good guy and one of my favorite artists. And uh, yeah, that, that chat is coming up, so buckle up. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. If you would like to help keep the LEDs blinking over here at Podular Modcast, then head over to patreon.com forward slash Podular Modcast. Link in the show description. So I'm always racking my brain for cool incentives to get people to sign up for the show. And a recent idea I had is actually kind of stemming out of another idea. As you may or may not know, I ran a workshop, an intro to your rack. Man, Eurorack is hard to say, Eurorack. I ran an intro to Eurorack workshop at Patchworks not that long ago, and I uh, used VCV Rack, and it was a lot of fun, and I got to my, I got to myself thinking, <laughs> I got myself thinking, uh, 
I think I could probably do this remotely and do, you know, like, I don't know if it'd be through Zoom or whatever platform, but be able to do modular workshops with people that aren't in my area. So yeah, I wanna figure out how to do that. And I think once I have the platform decided on, rather than just jump straight into it, and rather than jump straight into it, maybe what I could do is run a couple workshops that are for Patreon members. So it'd be a free workshop, and you'd have to be part of the Patreon to get access to it. And that way I could, you know, I could get your feedback and, you know, could be a little more loose and casual and I wouldn't have the pressure of, you know, feeling like, hey, they paid, uh, you know, money for professional lessons. I wanna make sure that I've got my stuff all up to snuff. And uh, I think that would be a cool way to not only interact with each other, but also, um, you know, a cool incentive to offer to people. So I'm hoping that I will be able to get something like that going soon. I was also thinking, you know, I would love to have like a, a Patreon party, but all of the, you know, all the Patreon subscribers, they're scattered all over the country and even the world. So that doesn't seem super likely, but would like an online Zoom hangout, like bi-monthly or once a month where we could share music with each other and just kind of generally chat about whatever comes to mind, would that be something that you'd be interested in? Uh, I think that would be really fun. Um, yeah, I'm trying to find ways to increase my Patreon support, but uh, you know, it's a bad economy. Times are weird. The show's been going on for a long time. I haven't been good at, you know, coming up with incentives to sign up. So, you know, like, let me know. Let me know if there's anything out there. If there's anything that I mentioned just now or any other ideas, I'm open to it. But again, thank you to everybody who supports the show. That's the lifeblood of the show. And uh, I need a blood infusion. <laughs> I also want to share about my road trip I went on with my wife, Hannah. Uh, if you've been listening to the show long enough, you know that we go on a yearly, week-long road trip where we camp um, for our anniversary. This year was our fifth year anniversary, so we drove down to the Redwoods and stayed in Yahats, Oregon, which was one of my favorite places in the world, and uh, it was just so much fun, and I think I shot my best video I've ever shot in my entire life down there. I'm getting better. I'm honing my craft. So I want to share just a quick little what I'm calling like an abstract, like, you know, like uh, how academic papers, research papers, they'll have their abstract at the very beginning. It's basically like a summary, but uh, very short and concise. So you can get an idea of what the, the paper is about. I made one patch the whole time. I didn't record a remote performance, but honestly, I just needed to just chill and uh, as much as I love doing those, I just, I didn't want to make it a priority on our anniversary because it was a shared thing, you know, with my wife and I. Yeah, so I did end up making one patch. I didn't shoot the performance. I filmed some of it, uh, but, so I'm gonna play a piece of that under some of my favorite footage that I got from the trip. And uh, then we'll get into our conversation with our Benny. Enjoy.
and we're rolling. And I do see, a, actually, will you say something? Something. Yep, there is your waveform. Cool. All right, we're off to the races. There's your waveform. It's my favorite game show. <laughs> what would that show be? There's your waveform. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's something to do with sensors, and they like hook it up to your body, and then maybe it's like, like a like, like a one of those shows where like the couple has to like prove how much they know each other, and oh, like yeah. that's my waveform. So they see the waveform of like their cup their partner's voice, and then they have to yeah. guess it or something. Yeah, so if it's a sine wave, they're telling the truth. But if it's a sawtooth, then they're lying. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I think I'm going to edit this out because we should probably like start developing this. It seems like <laughs> yeah, yeah. it could go somewhere. Well, isn't there a rule like if you mail it to yourself, like that, it counts as copyright or something? I don't know if that holds up anymore. But that was like, yeah. you must it's have been a band in a band in high school because that's what we all did. Like that was. Yeah. The- it's like oh we got like a like a fucking metal band from Roslyn, Washington had to worry about copyright like infringement. Like we don't want anybody stealing our shit. Yeah, um, you know <laughs> I remember back in like the early days of like you know people starting to put their music on MySpace. Like that was a huge thing. Is like hey like how do you copyright your music? Like if you put it on here, can just anyone take it? And yeah, um, things yeah. have changed. Like we all had to like learn on the go with streaming and all this stuff. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I'm I'm not even like registered. I don't think with like BMI or anything like that. Oh like, really? I don't, I don't. I probably should be. I I feel like everybody tells me I should be, but yeah, I I, I think I registered with AS, ASCAP. I want to say um, it's kind of like forced to for some project I was working on. Yeah, which probably yeah. a good thing. Yeah, probably <laughs> probably yeah. is a good thing that I'm on there. I, I think might I be like through like a months. distribution. What's that? I think I got a check from them for like thirty cents last year. So. <laughs> oh shit! You got you got a royalty check. Did you frame it? I feel like that deserves to be in a frame. You know what? I actually deposited. It. Maybe I should have. I was you just like, you know, the- <laughs> I'm deposit this thirty cents. Like that'll pay for you know tax on a coffee or something. Oh my god, that'd be. Uh, please tell me you went into a bank to do it. Like, to, I must just I to mean, hand I must a have teller. Something. Maybe I do have it somewhere. Like it's possible, but it's like in a box somewhere. <laughs> oh that's funny um so every time i see a new picture of you on instagram i'm like wait oh shit like you're like a you're like a fucking like a, you look like a an athlete now like a you look like a long distance runner or something like how much how much weight have you lost can i if you don't mind me asking as a fellow chubby guy, well, uh, you're an ex-chubby guy, but I feel as a current chubby guy, I can ask those questions. I mean, honestly, I'm a chubby guy. I'm still a chubby guy at heart. Like, I, oh, I yeah. have a sign in my kitchen that says "No more late night snacking," which <laughs> I do not adhere to. I still, yeah. Of course, yeah, that's really hard. I need my snacks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what the total is now. Like, I, I, I'm kind of reached the point where I stopped, stopped checking, and. Um, I'm just kind of like hovering, I, I don't know, somewhere between like 190 and 200. Oh, really? Of. Oh, I, th- yeah. I thought you, uh, I, I was guessing like 170, but I, f- I forget that you're like, you're quite a, you're like a couple inches taller than me. Um, yeah. But I, I think a like, lot of it's like, too, like, especially in the legs since I run. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm sure that's part of it. Um, Your fingers are yeah. super strong from turning all those synthesizer dials. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just my legs and fingers and then my arms and everything else is not great. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I, so when I like all through high school, I was around like two thirty. uh, yeah, around two thirty to two forty at my biggest and like no muscle at, I was in a little shorter and like my senior year, I think I got down to 210. And then over that summer, I backpacked every weekend and skated every night after work at the skate park for hours. And I got down to 175. And oh, wow. a lot of people thought I was like, oh, whoa, you're like 150 or something. Like I always look heavier than I am. And I actually had people ask me from my hometown if I was on meth because. Oh, I wow. Lost. So yeah, I mean, going from 240 to 175, like over a span of a year and a half or something. Um, and then, yeah. yeah. 
but I, I think I've actually lost the, um, I've probably lost like 30 pounds since, uh, we were, well, not when we were last together in San Francisco, but, uh, when we were in, um, Colorado, that was yeah. like one of oh, my heaviest times. Thanks, man. I feel svelte. Not really, but. <laughs> That's good. It's a good feeling. I think yeah, that's what's it, most important, right? Is it's not the actual number on the scale. It's how you feel, mm-hmm. and, you know, how confident you feel in your skin, which is yeah, fucking difficult to do. Like that's really yeah. Even though yeah. I lost all that weight, like I still feel very you know self conscious about oh about totally my body. Like it's hard. That to didn't not go away for me for a long time. Because, you know? Yeah, I actually, I, I actually, I thought I would never get to a point where. It wasn't because it, I mean, I was just chubby growing up my whole life and, you know, friends yeah. and family. I, I was the like the kid who beat everybody else to the joke to make fun of myself for being fat. And then oh, yeah. everybody would thought that, well, I kind of gave everybody free reign and I was cool with it. So people thought that was cool, but you know, it still wasn't awesome. Um, so yeah, even when I was like 175 and like f- super fit, uh, when I saw pictures of myself then, I still thought I looked fat. And now I see pictures of myself from then and I'm like, holy shit, dude. I was like a skinny person for one, like for a brief yeah. period of time. Um, <clears throat> it's really trippy how that works. Yeah. Um, and yeah, for context, like I know we're like throwing around out weight numbers, but at my heaviest uh, in July 2021, I think it was 2021, right? Yeah. Uh, I was like almost 400 pounds. So, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I pretty well, much what, am, six fo- are you six foot, six foot one? Like five foot ten and a half or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, yeah. I'm five eight. So, everybody above that, I'm just assuming six foot. But. No, I mean, I wish I was six foot. I'm sure that like magically gets you, you know, grants you entrance to like certain clubs or something, but. You need to get one of those uh, like upside down machines where you hang your ankles in it and just like stretch yourself all day. Yeah, imagine Christian Christian Bale in one of those things or something. (laughs) Yeah, he's in like a rack for the next role. Um, Well, that's awesome. It's like I'm half the man that I used to be because I basically have lost. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. Have you been listening to a lot of Stone Temple Pilots? Yeah, but not the stuff with Scott Weiland, but you know. Whoever their new singer is. Oh, rem- oh! Remember they had talk show for briefly. No. <laughs> so that was Stone Temple Pilots, Sands, Scott Weiland, I think, in the late really? '90s, early 2000s. Yeah, I did not. Um, know that. Yeah, I, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it was. It made any splashes. I have anything. two Stone Temple Pilot uh, anecdotes. One is Ooh. that I used to think. They were related to the um, STP coal, like, you know, for barbecues. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the fluid, like, like I thought the, they were the like petrol company. Related in some way. I mean, this is when I was very young. Um, mm-hmm. And the other thing is, I, my mom, I don't know how true this is, but she said she dated one of the band members growing up. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm not sure if I it was the it... bass player, the guitarist, or the drummer. It definitely wasn't Scott Weiland, but apparently, like, one of them grew up here in in San Jose or in the Bay area. Um, I think that was the drummer. Cause the bassist and guitarist are brothers, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think it was one of the brothers. So, okay. Wow. I don't know how true Good. it is. So don't yeah, take this with a grain of salt, but I grew up with my mom telling me that she dated one of those guys. You know, it's really fun. Uh, so Hannah's parents um, told her when she was really young, that Phil Collins was her uncle. <laughs> like nice. they just thought that was funny when she was like a really little kid. <clears throat> and I think she, she went on, she like believed that until, you know, for years and then was wow. like, wait. she reached the age where she was like, that's wait a minute. We're that's not true. And then they were like, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. but <laughs> Talk about never met her. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so such a funny, but such a weird trick to pull on your kid. But like, I could see myself doing that if I had a kid just yeah. like fucking with them. Like, yeah, yeah, it almost was like they told too. Like you, like you think it's like the small innocent thing. It's like, oh yeah, they don't know who Phil Collins is, and then right, yeah, grows <laughs> the bar. She was like, oh wow, that's my uncle. <laughs> oh, um, so you, so you like? I think we talked. We've talked about this before. I looked last time you were on. 
Well, it was a little, it was for that San Francisco ep- episode, but I don't know if we really like, we didn't really like have a chat for that one, but I know we had talked about like, you know, we've, we, you've been on this, I think your fifth time and we've talked a lot about like mental health and, and just health um, struggles, but you've been on this health kick and it seems like without any backslides, just driving forward for two and a half, three years now or something, two years yeah. at least. Over a little over two years, um, yeah, two two and a quarter or something, or two and a third. Um, yeah, because I remember when I saw you in San Francisco, I was like, "Oh shit, Austin's going to be skinnier than me soon," you know, <laughs> like you know, because like you and I were always like, like you know, people like taking pictures of us and and making fun of us for looking alike, and then I was like, "Oh well, we're not going to get that anymore." But then I see your pictures, and I'm like, maybe I should grow a man button and lose a bunch of weight. <laughs> Just to like, just to keep the joke going. I know, right? And then uh, <laughs> pick up running and quit drinking. And... <laughs> no, but um, yeah, it has been a, it's been an interesting two and a half years. You know, mostly positive. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, and you know, it's not has not been perfect by any means. You know, I mean, some things have been better than others. Uh, like, thankfully, I have not. You know. Back, back slid is that the right yeah. tense? <laughs> back slid, back slid. Having back slid <laughs> on the the drinking, you know, which is I think definitely one of the key things. Um, but you know, food is still very much a struggle. Yeah, and I have to constantly watch myself to that I'm not trying to you know fill the void, so to speak, with other things. Totally. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it, it could be anything. Like sometimes I'll just find myself getting really into something. I mean, it was in the music gear, you know. Sometimes I'll just be like obsessing over gear and like mm-hmm. you know, trying to fill that void. That yeah, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I have no idea yeah. what you're talking about. This doesn't yeah. resonate with me at all. <laughs> no, so, I totally get that, and yeah, I kind of. I kind of bounce between, but f- honestly, out of any vice and like anything like that, food has always been the hardest thing for me. Like, yeah. like I, I get Oreos when we go camping, that's it. Ah. Because if, if I buy Oreos, like I will eat all of the, I will eat the Oreos till they're gone and then I'll be bummed that there's no more Oreos, you know? So like, yeah, yeah I, there's just certain things that I just, as a rule, don't keep in the house because oh yeah, it's... Yeah, that's pretty much the same. Like I, I legit have to hide snacks in my house. Like I live alone. <laughs> uh, and, so yeah, you know, how do you hide them from yourself successfully? Uh, you know, it's just get very tired and put it in the back of some cabinet, you know, that I don't usually uh-huh. go in. But then the problem <laughs> is like, I'll find it like, you know, six months later and be like, oh, for, sweet. I got, you know, yogurt covered pretzels I forgot about. Yeah, right. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, the food is definitely one of the more difficult things. And, you know, the mental aspect of it is difficult, too. Um, I think that's been one of the more challenging things is, like, confronting all of these, like, things that I used to try to block and numb out. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. confronting them head on now. Yeah. Um, It's very tricky. And it's like, oh, yeah, you learn that, like, you know, your emotions and things like grief are not linear. They're... You know, they come at you in different forms, and um, yeah, it can be yeah. <laughs> it can throw you for a loop sometimes. Um, I yeah, I feel like sometimes I don't even like I don't even realize that I am you know filling a void or something until like in yeah. retrospect I'm kind of like, why did oh, we yeah. go hog wild on the why did I get McDonald's? That's not, the, I feel like McDonald's is like where food and toys meet. That's like, there's like yeah. a Venn diagram. So it's they like, that's hire you for their ad copy <laughs> <laughs> for food and toys. Meet. Um, so how much, like, what would you say the uh, effect of, of this health kick and everything and, and losing weight and not drinking, how much has that affected your depression? Because I know you and I both have had struggles with that our pretty much our whole lives. Uh, that's a good question. I I don't know if I've ever like truly tried to articulate it and put it into words. Um, you know, I journal here and there, but 
Mm. I think on some level I feel a little more even keel in a way. Like I don't mm-hmm. feel like my emotion or my, you know, depression kind of goes one way or the other now. Um, I'm not articulating it very well, but like I don't feel the extremes that I would when I was drinking very heavily. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like these like pure pure joy moments, you know, especially like if I was out drinking with friends or playing a show, you know, mm-hmm. I think back to the velocity event that we played a couple of years ago yep. in Seattle. And it's just like, yeah, that, those moments are just like, I live for this. Like these are the best moments of my life. Totally. But on the yeah. other hand, it's like, I have the thing, you know, the thing where you're <laughs> drinking in bed and like, yeah, you're just like, you know, it's not good. <laughs> I'll totally. The, no. The harsh details, but yeah, I think so. You, yeah, you were really leaning on al- alcohol as as a coping mechanism for the depression. Yeah, I mean that was just yeah. one thing, you know. One, yeah, one of the th- right one tentpole of it, you know, food is mm-hmm. part of it, and you know, consumerism and you know, escapism in any way I can, any way mm-hmm. I could. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some of that stuff still is a problem. Like, yeah, I, I will still, you know, if I'm not able to deal with something, I'll just be like, okay, I'm just going to dive into a book, you know, which is more healthier. Than, it's better than a bottle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. So, yeah, I'm fine. Like, so I actually, at the last few days, uh, Friday morning, uh, and it's Wednesday as of, as of this recording, um, Wednesday night too. I never record podcasts at night. It's kind of cool. Um, this is a re- podcast or, um, podular modcast after dark, after dark, <laughs> special Patreon <laughs> no, nah, nobody puts Austin behind the paywall. That that would be fucked up. Um, so, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so we're leaving. For, so we're going on a week long um, road trip, and oh. we're going camping. So I'm definitely going to you know knock back a few brews around the fire and stuff. But I I was thinking last night, like I think I want to like just cut cut out because i've done it but i've done it before because alcohol has never been it's you know it's something that's like been a can like consistency like on the weekends here and you know like not here and there but like every weekend like um but it's been really weird getting i've got you know diagnosed with adhd um like i think it's been about a year and a half two years ago and it's been a real journey like because at first it was like okay well that makes more sense and then i got medication for it and that medication can make you feel like a superhero and so for like a while i was like not realizing it but i was kind of like you know just leaning on that too much and that made me and that would make me want to drink more because it was just like i don't know just so my, my biggest problem with alcohol as an adult so far has been actually feeling happy and then using it like celebratory rather than like a yeah. coping thing. I think subconsciously and deep down it is still a coping thing probably and an escape, but no, it's a yeah, hard, it's, I mean, I, I think yeah. it's all part of it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, I'm going to be 40 in February. So I'm like, maybe I should, uh, you know, just cool that down a little bit because I don't know. I, I've always kind of, except for food, but in my younger years, like with, if it was, you know, drugs or just anything like smoking cigars or whatever, like I've always like leaned in, but I have these alarm bells that start going off that like, okay, if you don't lean, if you don't stop leaning in now, like that's, that's going to be trouble. And I've always been pretty good about just being able to um, do it. Yeah. So I'm thinking I want to do that because honestly, and you've been a huge inspiration for this, like, I think, you know, getting like getting married and just going through my mid forties and shit, like I've just got more secure. I'm not as insecure about my body. And that is a good thing for me mentally, but it's not good physically because, you know, I don't have as much of a a reason to want to be in shape. But just lately I was just thinking like it would be cool to be in shape. It would feel good to like be in shape. So definitely does yeah. feel good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean just the mobility, I'm- right? That I'm, you know, the shining example of being in good shape, but, you know, 
I'm, I mean, you've worked very hard. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, you know, my thought is just like, I, well, yeah, you know, staring down my forties in a couple of years, it's like, I don't want to have to be to compromise the way I want to live, you know, like, right. You know, God forbid something happens like, you know, where I'm not able to go to shows anymore or be as mobile, go on hikes and things that I want to do anymore. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm, I, that kind of like was one of the things that I hate the term scared straight. That's so fucking bullshit. But, um, yeah, that's kind of the one, one thing that kind of like terrified me. And, you know, one of the things is like, I got a really good firsthand example of it, unfortunately with my, my mom, mm-hmm. you know, she passed away and, uh, at a very young age in her forties and it oh, was wow. due to her relationship with alcohol. And I was like, that is my path that I'm on right now. And yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Cause I'm going to end up the same way. Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe I, I don't know. It's, it's a weird thing to, to, you know, have to, to, to deal with, but, it's For better sure. to be aware of it than to not, I think. Definitely. And to, yeah. So when I hear like, this is like my armchair psychologist, but like I hear that and just knowing what depression is like for me anyways, and, and what like addiction or, you know, what, you know, just a tendency towards unhealthy things. Like I, I feel like I wonder how much of your like subconscious or even like your, your, your romantic depressed musician you know like millennial brain was like almost trying to like live out a prophecy or you know some weird thing like that where yeah and you get to an age where you're like that's really dumb i shouldn't think (laughs) that's just like a yeah i feel like i had stuff like that looking at it is like i'm slowly killing myself because i'm too cowardly to just do it right yeah soft suicide was my thought like yeah. I never said it out loud or anything, but that was like the thing I would think, you know, when I was a couple drinks in, I'd be like, yeah, this is how I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, as sad as and fucked up as that sounds, but that that's how I felt. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, like you said, it, you know, you hate to use something like scared straight, but yeah, maybe those, that phrase, because it's been used by like TV shows and shit, but like, it can be a, I think it sounded, I mean, it was a good motivator for you with a healthy perspective on it, you know, like, yeah. I don't think fear alone is a good motivator except for like no, life or death survival. Yeah. But like, I think, with that caveat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I feel like, no, and, and I don't, that's not what I don't think you said. I was, I was, you know, it yeah. seems like a, con- like a, a concern with like a healthy perspective on it is a good motivator. Though, I think, yeah. You know? I think I part just of it made that up just too, like, so. you know, just wanting to be able to go on hikes with my friends that I, I couldn't do anymore. Like I was struggling to do hikes and, and also just, you know, realizing like, as we're getting older, like the friendships that you make, they're very, they become more familiar, familial over time. Like, mm-hmm. you know, your long-term friends will become your family in a lot, in a lot of ways, especially you know, if you're like me, where your family's kind of, kind of scattered, mm-hmm. I hope no one's watching this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're listening to this. Right. But, you know, there's a lot of like trauma and fucked up shit there. So it's like, oh yeah, I, I want to be around the people that I love for a very long time. Um, mm-hmm. And I want to, you know, I love music. I want to be able to hear what Bjork's next record sounds like. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that was going to be, yeah. Like uh, my next question, just like, I feel like just, you know, you know, we don't, we don't like talk all the time, but we're, we're, we're like, you know, we, we hit the ground running every time. Like we haven't been like, yeah. r- like we haven't hung out for a long time. So I feel like we've become good buds over the last years. And I feel like I've noticed you just being like putting, putting yourself out there. I don't know if that's the right term, but like, I feel like, you know, you've been doing more like video stuff and you've been interested in like the education side of like, just to making videos to teach people things. And I just feel like you're, I, I, is your motivation better now, you know, like for music? What like, do you feel more creative or more propelled into the studio? You know, that's, 
I'll be honest, that's one of the main things I'm struggling with currently. Oh, really? Is, yeah, um, you know, dealing with creativity while not having, like, that backup crutch to be, like, I don't know. The best, the way I always thought of it is, like, drinking was, like, a way to just say, like, there's this giant button that says, fuck it. And for me, mm-hmm. drinking was like, fuck it. I'm just going to follow whatever whim. Like, it doesn't matter what this is. I'm just going to put it out there for the world, world to hear, whoever wants to hear it on the internet. Um, and now I find myself struggling to get to that point where it's like, okay, fuck it. I'm going to let it go. I'm, I'm finding myself much more, not guarded, but like, you know, I thought I had a good term the other day. And now I Discerning? Can't think- yeah, just like very like too ingrained in the fine details. Like, I don't know. I'm just like too bogged down in the details. Um, the like the like the technicality stuff. Like like getting every sound just, right. Like, I'm like or... I can't finish anything because I'm like, it's not perfectionist, but it's just like I don't know. I, I'm aimless in a way. Like I don't know. It's hard to be like okay, this is the finished thing. This is the finished. You need track. a producer. Yeah, exactly. I'm not, I'm not pointing at anybody, but send me yeah. some stuff. I'll I'll finish it. I mean, not finish it, but I'll. Come on, Brian. You know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll Brian. Phone. Yeah, I'll 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 Brian Rubin. Brian Eno Rubin. Brian, Rick Rick. Rick. <laughs> yeah, Brian Eno. Yeah. Yeah, just come over, take your shoes off, lay on the couch. <laughs> just give me like ten notes. So going into hoodie season, I like to get a new hoodie, at least one new hoodie every. Uh, every fall because there's nothing better than a nice cozy new hoodie um let's see what else do we have in the store speaking of it being cold there's all sorts of cool beanie options pink we've got some multicolor, some tie-dye you know i like tie-dye do you want a mug with my goofy looking mug on it <laughs> see what i did there so we got a classic tea as well 15 bucks that's a good deal all these different colors I like that one, the pink with the purple on it. That is pretty, pretty cool, if I may say so myself. Also added a tote bag, got a different t-shirt here. Let's check out the different colors on this one. That design is by John Herndon of Tortoise. Uh, That's my goofy looking face with some patch cables coming out of my mouth, looking like an absolute maniac. Of course, we got our cool like baseball style jersey shirt here in multiple colors as well. Look at those. Ooh. So maybe we should start a Podular Modcast softball team. That would be fun. And I had to make a couple of these because I am just such, I love, I collect notebooks and journals. I always have. Got a whole bookshelf full of uh, journals and notebooks that are, some of them are almost full, but some of them have like two or three pages written in them. I just, uh, I really like them. So there's that one, and then there's this this cool, like harder bound, like higher quality one coming in all sorts of different colors. So if you want a cool notebook, again, with my goofy looking mug on it, you can get that. Recently added are some stickers. This one comes in a couple different sizes. There are a set of pod mod pins. So this is pretty sweet here, I think. Uh, you can get all these different cool pins with uh, the logo and different versions of the art that John Herndon did. So yeah, you know, get yourself all pod modded up with your hoodies and hats and notebooks. Like you could just be a walking ambassador for Podular Modcast. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? Did you ever read, have you read his book? No, and this is this is a, a part of me I'm still trying to weed out, but it's kind of like his whole, like, because he says he doesn't know what a mixer does or how is it, how it yeah. works. I'm kind of like, I don't want to read your book for that reason. No. But I've heard yeah. great it's things about similar, it. Similar, uh, I had a similar thought. And um, I did read a good book recently about creativity called The Creative Habit by mm-hmm. Twilight Tharp. Okay, uh, I'm going to look that up right now. Yeah, basically it's about, you know, setting creative habits to, I guess, or setting habits to better set up when you are going to be creative. Uh Um, I just totally botched that. But yeah, basically it's about setting habits um, and how habits like affect creativity and affect your life. So I've been 
I read that recently and kind of slowly implementing things from that book or like, you know, my own habits to kind of try mm-hmm. to get the juices flowing. I think like, right. Well, the- I mean, to get to your like, where you are health wise and like running and stuff like you had to develop like a bunch of new habits, right? Like, so like, yeah, exactly. It's, you know, you have to, you have to like build some sort of structure out of this thing and consistency for whatever it is you want to do. I'm going to turn off my air purifier real quick. <laughs> cut this are you out. sure? Like, I, I don't want you to, I don't want my buddy Austin to have to drink uh, or, or uh, breathe unpure air. Okay, we're that. dealing with smoke right now here, so that's probably what's. Oh right, up. yeah, oh, right. So maybe I need to check my window window seat. <laughs> <laughs> so all the windows are closed currently, so I don't know what's going on. Sorry, um, I totally derailed you with my attempt at a really stupid joke. Um, no, but yes, I totally just forgot about to- too. The, the this the book and trying to like form like you're trying to take yeah. what you're taking away from that book and try to apply some of that stuff to being more creative. Yeah. So I think like that's definitely helped, but I think the the thing that I'm still struggling with is, you know, making something fi- like a finished thing. I don't know. <laughs> it's like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm struggling to finish tracks and finish songs and. I, are you all not mental. liking it or like, are you not liking what you're making or are you, are you just being like critical or, or are you like imagining other people's like critique or like what it, like, have you identified any aspects yeah. stopping you? Like, I think so. I, th- I think part of it is just like, not, it's like the paralysis of choice. It's like, okay, I have so many options for what, you know, let's say I'm working on a track. It's like, I have so many ways that I can direct this track and, you know, so many different things to try. It's like, I'll, yeah, I, I don't know what to do. It's like, I'm lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I have a little bit of direction. So maybe I do need a Rick Rubin type to come in and just be like, do this and this and this, and it'll sound good. But I'm slowly um, working my way out, out through that. I, I think it's dude. a good sign that I do have like, ideas right like i don't feel like i'm a lacking motivation or Mm -hmm. i'm not able to come up with ideas it's just connecting the idea to the finished thing i'm struggling to like connect those dots Mm -hmm. where i think in the past it would have been a little easier if i'm just like okay i'll just drink a little bit and make it work (laughs) right right yeah yeah because yeah it's lowering the inhibitions so like you're dealing with having like normal functioning inhibitions yeah. uh as far as that's yeah that's kind of interesting um i had a thought on that oh so do you have like um do you have a a bunch of kind of partially finished things because i was gonna say if you just give them like some time to go and check them out again like you may find that some of them are done or you know whatever yeah. No, I, I, you know, it hasn't been like, oh, I'm not able to finish anything. It's, you know, I've contributed tracks to compilations and I've performed live over, you know, a couple of times over the past year with like all new materials. So it's like, nice, not, you know, not nothing, but right. Yeah. Well, those are all, those are all external like motivators with deadlines. Exactly. <laughs> so you need to find it. So if anybody out there listening, I'm talking to you labels. Get a hold of Austin because, of course, you want to release the labels, our uh, next music too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit! <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's coming soon. Um, well, yeah. that's something I wanted to talk to you about some of your shows because you uh, you've played with some really really cool bands that are kind of you know like adjacent to the type of music that modular people make and stuff. But like, um, and it seems like you've had a few few cool bands like reach out to you to ask to like play a few shows in San Francisco or even like, have you gone on a mini tour with anybody in the last couple of years? I feel like. Not since the pre pandemic. Um, okay. Yeah. It's been a while. I guess like the mini tour that you and I did, was it last year? Maybe it was two years ago. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, it was. I think it was two years ago. Yeah. I mean that, I mean, yeah, besides that, it's just kind of been like one-off shows here and there. Yeah. But um, you played with Squid, right? Yeah, I played with Squid. That is that so cool. Pretty, yeah, that that was probably – that was, I think that was the first show I played locally 
uh, back from, you know, coming back from the pandemic. And that was definitely a nice way to, to, uh, kick that off. Um, yeah, they I were feel lovely like people. you got that email from whoever, from them, their, their people or one of them reached out to you. I think you got that email while you and I were like just hanging around after sound check in Colorado, or I feel like I, we, I would know I was with you when you got a cool email from a band. I think it was that one, right? I think yeah, that must've been it. I, I, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, probably happened like, right oh, before cool. <laughs> I spit all over your food that you just brought back. Oh yeah. I told For those of you who don't know that story, go listen to uh, the previous episode with Austin. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was funny. That was, oh, uh, yeah. that was so embarrassing. <clears throat> um, what I love about playing those like proper, you know, rock venues is the the sound systems are quite nice. Yeah, I remember you telling me um, like it was like really particularly good there. Yeah, but then you know, then every once in a while you play a place like. Um, well, I want to give a shout out to Scorpio Palace in Denver. I don't think that's you and I played Space Gallery, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. The art gallery. Yeah, we the the last time I the last two times I played in Denver um, is this place called Scorpio Palace, and yeah, they have a killer sound system. Oh, really? That's not crazy. I want to uh, go back for sure. That was yeah, fun. Shit. Great group of people. Super fun. Yeah, nicest people, nicest people ever. Um, mm-hmm. Um, I feel like you've played with like a couple other really cool artists, um, recent, like somewhat recently since we've last like chatted. But yeah, I can't think of them, so. I'm trying to think. Um, I just played a show in Oakland a few weeks ago with Chuck Johnson. You might be familiar. Oh yeah, yeah. You were telling me. Yeah, we chatted a bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, um, I loved his set. It was like, yeah, he does like pedal steel stuff. Oh, nice. Like pedals, pedals and yeah, it was incredibly, incredibly moving. Um, made me want to go buy a pedal steel, and I'm, when I saw the prices, I was like, oh, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe I have to sell some bottle or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you start with a lap steel. You could get a lap steel for cheapish. That is true. Yeah, it's not quite but the same. But then I'm just like, I hear the, the slides of like when the pedal goes down. I'm yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's that's where the but, that's where the sweet juice is, but yeah, you, you know. But then you get the thought like, oh, how would I recreate this on a synthesizer? Right. But yeah. I'm actually in the middle of doing that now. I'm like making a little control controller skiff to be able to do like strums and like um, like pitch bendy stuff similar to pedal steel. Okay, what do you got in there? Well, currently, I've got a, a lot of things in there. Too much. But um, I think the main thing that's kind of allowing me to do what I want to do is the um, Geranalog Step 8. Okay. So you can kind of do like hocketing type stuff or like voice allocation type stuff. And then that, I just it's just an eight-step sequencer? you just like playing the knobs or like – So it's not quite an eight-step sequencer, but I mean the, in, in simplest terms, it's basically eight sample and holds or eight track and holds. Oh. Okay. But okay. then you could like – it has various ways to route each channel to each other. So you could do like pocketing, which is basically like – it's not quite like a shift register where you know like a shift register is like shifting each note down the line. Mm-hmm. I think pocketing, if I'm correct, please don't – I've never even heard this term. Actually, so you know, a- synth nerds do come at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, but I, I think it's like – basically allows you to play i think intelligel shifty does it um okay okay you can like you would route it to x amount of oscillators to play it like polyphonically okay whereas a shift register would like yeah i'm not very good at explaining it but yeah um basically i'm treating it as like okay these are the eight strings wait is it like shift register in like but like it can have multiple outputs with different values each step or each time it's released yeah. is that okay or okay, one that's cool. or one per step so basically it's got eight channels and you could like choose if you want it to shift or it, it'll just fill it up sequentially and then reset as you go along okay 
Journey Analog stuff is Watch Div, Div fucking Kids amazing. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> but warning to everyone out there watching Div Kids videos, um, don't don't let that fool you into thinking that you're gonna just be able to get that module and just do what he did in the video right away. I've made yeah. that mistake a few times. <laughs> yeah. So I've got what else I've got in there? I've got like um Expert sleepers FH2 for like MIDI inputs, just in case if I want MIDI. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I've got what is the name of that module? That's like a little press bar. It's like a wooden, wooden little bar. I don't know if I know this. Oh, it's, it's a module uh, with a wooden bar that you press. You know what? Let me let me get it. I have the case right yeah, over I got, here. Yeah, I want to see it. I've never heard of this. I want that jacket, by the way. That's a great jacket. So I'm kind of working on this case still. Uh huh. So you can see you got the step eight up here. There we go. Okay. And then here, it's a press by Softwire Synthesis. So you like oh, press it. I in. don't. Weird. Is it just like <laughs> like a pressure sensitive CV out that like is it yeah. like? So it has uh, inputs as well, um, so you could okay. like, run signal into it, and then like uh -huh. you press, and then it will let the signal through. Um, and it's got a gate output as well, so like on the gate, on press, like the gate will fire off. But the reason I was like, oh yeah, this would be good to simulate the, um, I guess the pedal part of the pedal steel. So oh, imagine right. you have yeah. the going, and then whatever voice it's on, you press it down, and that'll like do the pitch bendy thing right or, or you could even use yeah. that if you had like a transpose input on something like you know like the swan that has all these like chords oh yeah, yeah. isn't that's what those 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 do right they basically change your your key right with the they're not just made for bending I it's almost so. like a harp right where you like you put them and lock them into a there might be both but i, think I know that's a way of switching both. keys and shit because it's all um, open tuning okay. right so yeah, exactly. it switches between open tunings. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I'm I'm doing just a very simple version of it where it is just you know picking one CV value and just bending that, and then just setting mm -hmm. it up so it bends like you know a semitone or two. Right. And right. then okay, um, because you know it, the nature of like something that you're controlling with your your hand that's like very fast and it's got like these springs in it that. It's like as soon as you let go, it just springs back up. I got this um, the dual sample and hold, uh, dual sample and hold by ADAC. ADAC. Okay, yeah. But what's cool about it is it could also be a dual slew, um, oh, nice, and a dual track and hold. So I'll be using that as just like a dual slew thing for it because the, the okay. press is uh, two channels, um, as well. So oh, cool. It's like, yeah, nice. just pair those two together, and yeah, it's uh, so you're getting like. You're just you're you're using the press to just let that slew in. That's at a fixed rate. That's going to change the notes. Right? Is that exactly. what you're saying? And whatever note yeah. that is active at that moment on step eight, I think that's the one that like will bend. So like everything else that's kind of playing doesn't bend. So mm -hmm. it's like if you ha if you're using like let's say the summit or the peak, the polyphonic synthesizers. Yeah, I got a summit you know, right when here. You change, when you mess with the pitch wheel you hear every single voice pitch down or up mm -hmm. as opposed to just the single one. And that, that, that's what I want to do is just like have a single note or two pitch, uh, bend. right. As opposed to the whole thing. Right. Cause that's yeah, I think I, the pedal steals like, I'm like, I'm going to try to recreate that. That's pretty fucking well. Keep me updated on that. That yeah. sounds like I want to see, like, I want to see the pro that would be almost like a cool little, like, um, like, video series or not like a, like a short, like, Oh yeah. No. Uh, I definitely play, have plans for it. Okay. And then cool. I was like, Oh yeah, this would be cool. Just to be like, Oh yeah. Make modular, you know, an instrument, a physical instrument. So there's like That's, other controllers in there yes. too. Like I have a joystick controller in there and, um, I was going to say, there's like a little keyboard one U thing. So if I oh, want to yeah. enter on that and then I That's have, funny. The, uh, Oh, go ahead. Well, no, I want to – let's button up this because I was about to tell you all of my cool toys that I have for similar reasons. <laughs> Got the Coma Commander. Is What is so, that? 
It's basically D beam. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't think of theremin for a second. Like so I was like, photo <laughs> resist, like um, photo resistors, for like light sensing. So you're just kind of like yeah. attenuating so, stuff based on. Yeah. That. One of the things I've been doing is like, you know, like, oh yeah, I should use that as like the way to strum virtual strings. Nice. And nice. then, you know, using all the modules available to me to kind of like, I don't know, mess with it. So far, I've, I'm still learning learning some of these modules and like how to implement this, but so far it's okay. I think mm -hmm. I have a video on my Instagram doing doing that, um, using the Coma Commander, I almost said Cobra Commander. <laughs> <laughs> using the Cobra Commander, they should make it. Yeah. Coma Cobra Commander. Um, yeah. But I was gonna say, like using that with the IntelliGel scales, the quantizer. Mm -hmm. And what's mm -hmm. cool about that is you can it has like a every time it changes note, or you can set it up so every time like it detects a CV value change on you know the CV that it's quantizing, it'll output uh -huh. a gate as well. Oh, nice, so, nice. And you could have that sync to a clock, so like instead of like you know going crazy audio rate when you're moving your hand on the on the sensor. You can just have it sync to whatever clock you want, so it doesn't go too fast or too slow. Oh, nice! Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds sounds pretty good just doing that. But then I was like, okay, now I want to expand this and like, you know, use multiple voices and do pitch bendy type stuff. So it's become this whole project. Yeah. That you know, we'll we'll see where it goes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I've I've been I I maybe it's because we're both guitarists, um, but like really, really wanting to play the modular as an instrument with, you know, some sort of physicality and, and really getting like the, the, the swan, um, made me realize like, oh, I need like a, like a sequencer and maybe some touch control. And so I have the, um, I have the ASQ one from, uh, busy circuits, like with the, the old school push oh, yeah. buttons. It's got like, I love that thing. Super awesome. And then I got the no control. Um, which the no control plus the swan that just those two right there, that's, that's a what really fun scene. The spherical wavetable navigator ah, from 4MS. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. So it's got six, it's got six different oscillators on it that all can be, um, controlled. Uh, they're one volt per octave, each one of them. Um, and then what's really cool is, you know, it's got, it's got this quantized mode where you can just send, you could send it just a maths, you know, going and it'll, it'll, it'll sound weird, but it'll be in key or what, you know? Yeah. Um, that's like almost the exact same philosophy I had using, yeah, the intelligent quantizer, mm -hmm. but that's pretty cool. That's built into the module that would save a lot of space. I imagine six voices too. <laughs> yeah. And each, yeah. And then there's six LFOs that can all do different shit. Um, it's, I mean, I know people know about it and like it. I know like, it's not like, wouldn't say it's a hidden gem, but I feel like, I feel like that's one of the best and the, just the interface and everything. Like, I think it's one of the best pieces of music technology I've played with in a really long time. It's like, it's like the heart of my synth voice now. Um, oh, really? No, I've, yeah, I mean, I've long been curious about them because I know you could like record your own waveforms into it too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You can just, and it's like, it's like that. You can do it really quickly. Yeah. I've, I've been trying to get uh, my friend David Lutz to get one. Cause I'm just like, I can do cool stuff with you, with this, what you could do. And I feel the same way with you. Like you yeah. could, you could do some crazy shit with it, but yeah. Okay. So I got those and the final thing on the list, because I just want a lot of things to physically play. Uh, I really want the, um, IntelliGel Tetrapad. That thing yeah. just seems so, so cool. Um, yeah, I I had one with the expander briefly, and I, I kind of regret not having it now. Yeah. I was thinking about getting it again. Um, but then I found out about this this module called uh, Mnemonic Devices Juniper. Are you familiar with that? Uh, I don't think so. That it's I don't know how exactly how to describe it. It's kind of in the same vein as like a PAM's workout. Okay. Except where it can do CV recording, eight okay. channels of CV recording. What so, was it called? Juniper. Yeah, that's also in this case. Oh, you have one. I was and I got the expander too. Nice. Of course, okay. As, as is my want. Uh huh. <laughs> so, um, 
I was like, oh shit, okay, I just got a bunch of modules spilling, but that's okay. Oh no. <laughs> but I was like, oh, I could use any controller to, um, you know, record gestures. But I think Tetrapad still might be the best, like, just in terms of like how it feels and everything. Yeah, it's just, yeah, and it's, I like that it's got all the different modes. And all, I mean, not to just to go on an intelligent tri- like um, gas session here, but I, I'd like the plane R2 as well. That thing seems pretty cool. The what two? The plane R2 with it's like oh, the joystick, yeah. um, but it's way more than just a joystick. I have the dope for one, but I I broke the spring, so I had, I replaced the um, actual joystick in it, and it worked. And then I like moved some stuff around, it, and now everything but like the like. It has a bunch of outputs, but like four of the outputs don't work. And oh no, you know, I, I haven't really tried to figure it out. But um, it's a pretty fun one. But I, I want one that like doesn't snap back into place, which you could take the spring out if you wanted. But like, yeah, I know the intelligent one doesn't snap, right? And I think mm-hmm. the one I have in this case here is the the transient modules. Um, oh, is that like the thick. small, like smallish one, or like eight or ten HP or something? Yeah, it's pretty small. Forgive my modules that are falling out. <laughs> God, okay. Yeah, you can see it right there in the corner. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Crisis. <laughs> okay, apparently I did not uh, screw everything yeah. in yet. Yeah. I Sorry to the Bafaco Rampage. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a thing of beauty right there. Um, Sorry to the Rock well, Morpheus. <laughs> that's the filter, right? Yes, or one of the filters. They have several. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that their stuff is... Incredible. Like, it is insane. I'm, like, I'm really on a huge uh, assimilator kick right now. Okay. Which, which is that? The, okay, nice. Um, which, I think the expander comes out soon, which is going to give it... Um, MIDI capability, including like being able to play it back polyphonically, which should oh, be pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. And so it can I've, do CV. I've been... <laughs> it can do what? CV to MIDI. So, because oh, it has nice. like a whole band of CV inputs, and I guess it could like route all those into MIDI control changes, which is. Holy shit. Should be interesting. <laughs> I've just recently started like dipping back into MIDI, and I never went. Like I've always been a hardware person, but I've been working with Madrona Labs doing videos for them. Do you know Madrona Labs? Oh. Yeah, Dude. I'm really excited for that. Uh, is it like Sumu? I think the name Sumu. Yeah. Sumo? Yes, that Sumu. Like rever- yeah. Reverb slash. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I haven't. I haven't it's even possible. really seen that one. I've been, but I've been mostly playing with Kaivo, which is the granular physical modeling, um, and it uh, is. No it is so cool and so much fun. Um, but I just recently, uh, he, he gave me the, uh, a Lin instrument to make a video with for his alto. Oh, okay. And, and now I'm like, fuck, I want an MPE controller, but like, I don't even know enough about MIDI to CV, but like, do they have MIDI to CV things that can do like receive MPE control? Yes. I know. And send, Okay. But then like that's you run into the the thing where it's like you know, you can control so many things and you start need to you start needing to add like I know the expert sleepers FH two can do it, mm-hmm. but you know, that only has so many outputs and then you're like, Oh, but then I can get the expander and control more voices and before you know right. it you have expanders. Yeah. Which, and then you, you just I'm have like, like I'm a not going down that route. <laughs> But um, I, speaking of Linstrument, I've been really considering one of those lately. So my, I may have to pick your brain offline on that. Yeah. Or on- I mean, I, I, well, I didn't, I didn't spend enough time with it to get to know, um, get to know it really well because I needed to get it back to to Randy. Um, but uh, from my just from learning it enough to like teach the specific thing, of uh, you know what the video was about. Like it was, I was like, oh shit, this thing is really really cool it's got you know because you can have it laid out like a guitar fretboard it's got yeah. two little it's got guitar straps so you could like you put a guitar strap on and and play the instrument which i think would be that'd be a good look with that jacket exactly my, my yeah. meow wolf jacket <laughs> <laughs> oh is that a meow wolf jacket yeah it's a meow nice. wolf track jacket nice nice 
Yeah, Cut I think I, I really want to get a tracksuit, but I don't know why. I I don't think I should do that. But no, it's okay. As soon as you turn forty, they just send you one in the mail. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to but so. Yeah, I, I want a red it. Adidas one. I just want to like keep it, you know. Yeah, keep you want to be the school. corn of the synthesizer world, right? Uh, well, no, yeah. <laughs> Dang it! I forgot they did that. Almost exactly 24 hours later, my wife Hannah and I exchanged anniversary gifts, and this is what she gave me. Pretty funny timing, and pretty funny looking, but I feel good. I sh how did you could I even do that? your own cover of Adidas? You know, all oh day God. I dream about synthesizer synthesizers. Oh, how? <laughs> okay, we're gonna cut that out too because we have to make that song. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, oh, well, we're approaching an hour here, and um, I don't want to take up too much of your, your time on a work night, but is there anything we haven't uh, mentioned, or is there anything that you are hoping to say during our conversation, or blah, blah, blah? That's a good question. Um, was it? Thank you. I, was, I felt insecure about it, mostly the delivery. No. I mean, yeah, I... Unfortunately, I don't have a lot to promote at, at the moment. Um, I actually did want to mention something about the instrument and maybe ask if you had tried it. I know there was like a strum mode. I didn't try the strum mode, but yeah, it has a bunch of different like, yeah, I did not try I've it, but I did really see it. I to recreate guitar strums, but in MIDI or okay. CD. So I've got the CV part down, but now I'm like struggling to figure out how to do it MIDI. And I'm just like, should I just get an instrument? They um, make those MIDI guitars. I know. I've looked at the MIDI guitars too, but then I'm like, that seems too hard. I want. <laughs> and super and kind of like kind of cheesy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, like an, alternate, an alternate way to play it. So like, I like the instrument approach of like being able to like have one hand controlling and one hand strumming like this, almost like a lap steel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So maybe I need a MIDI lap steel or MIDI pedal steel. <laughs> oh my God. Fender, yes, who's listening? <laughs> um, I was going to say something else about the instrument. Oh, one thing that I just fucking love about the instrument uh, is the, the man, the manual is literally printed on the param like the perimeter of it, but like where the, like where the buttons you would push. So like it's yeah. like, I just figured out how to do stuff without looking anything up. Just being like, well, this has to mean yeah. this. Oh yeah. yeah. That's exactly what it meant. Like, yeah. I was like, how come the mono and grid doesn't have this? Yeah. I mean, because I feel like that's like, that's almost like in the, the camp of like your Apple products where it just looks cool. And it's like, that aesthetic is pretty cool. Like, I could see somebody not wanting the manual printed on the outside of the instrument, but it's good for yeah. people like me who are like, wait, what? So No, I'm into that too. I, I'll Maybe I can mention something I did do over this summer and spring. Um, maybe other people should try this. I don't know. But when I was feeling like, oh, I'm kind of feeling not creative or whatever at the moment, it was like, okay, I'm going to go through the manual for every single – instrument device pedal module that i own and take notes on anything that i did not know that it could do before and then actually do that that thing yeah that could be a, so this took like three months that i did it and now like okay now i feel like i know almost everything that i have in the studio pretty pretty intimately well or at least like i have you know notes that i can refer to and since i did it digitally you know i could like search for the notes and I, That's, I thought yeah. that was like a good way to just like learn more and appreciate what I have as opposed to being like, oh, I need to go get this other thing now. And Well, I could see that also like being like, oh, I didn't know either. I didn't know it had this function or I didn't even know this was a function. I've never thought about this, but now I want to try it. And that could be the seed that leads to like a, yeah. a, a new track or something, you know, like yeah. I find myself I, super I inspired by gear. So not all the time, but. Yeah. And just like kind of you know takes i mean maybe gives you like a way to think outside of the your the way your brain would normally work in some way mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah no i definitely have been relying on those notes for the last couple of months i mean like oh yeah I, sh I need to try this thing out on this thing and 
Uh, I have a similar thing that I'll I'll give as a tip because you just made me think of it. It's what I did for the last set that I did at um, for Portland Modular on the Spot. And Austin, I'm excited to tell you, I feel like I finally played a good modular set. I think that was besides, the first one. Besides the one we played together at Space Gallery. Right? I think that was, that was like, that's in my top three. I think I've done three that I would say were like, those were cool, but I feel like this one, I was like, I was happy. There was, there was nothing where I was like, oh, I fucked that up or. Um, oh, that's really cool. And, 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 you know, going back to me saying earlier, like just learning more and more about like, be, you know, my, my adult diagnosis of ADD and ha- like having so many things makes sense or like, holy shit, that's me. I never thought about that. Um, it's helped me think, uh, find ways to, um, kind of thwart the negative side of, of having that non neurotypicality. Um, so like I just redid this whole studio, like I tore it apart. Now everything here is ready to be tracked. It's all wired up. Like I've got a patch bay. bay. Yep. And <laughs> even dude, even my like USB battery packs, I've put like sticky back things with zip ties. And now this, these cords belong to this. So I just never want to have to look for anything and have my space get totally trashed. And That's what cool. I did before I did that is I got, you know, cause I have to make even planning stuff I have to make fun for myself or I won't do it. I got like my paint pens and my drawing pad and I like brainstormed and I took pictures of the room in the various stages over a couple of weeks and would go out in the backyard and just sit there and like write it out. And then I did the same approach with my set, took a picture of my unpatched synth and then would go sit in the yard and be like, okay, what am I building with all these? What needs to go? What kind of, and that seemed to serve me really well. Just like, holy shit, I'm almost 40 and I've never tried to plan out or organize, you know, like have some organization going into a big project. Yeah. And yeah. That to me like says like you're thinking, you're thinking with intention, right? Like you're just like, totally. Yeah. To, yeah. That's a beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah. Cause like, and I think it, I kind of, I relate to that like fuck it button you would, you yeah. would have <laughs> with like drinking. So, you know, I think not to, cause we're trying to wrap up here, but like, I was diagnosed dyslexic as a kid and that as I've gotten older it didn't sit right with me. Got this new diagnosis which fits so much better and has helped me understand. But I think growing up with like the thought of being dyslexic and everything, like I was I just like I think I got somewhat proficient at throwing the shit at you know, throwing shit at walls to see what sticks approach to things. Yeah. And that's all fine and dandy, but like like you said, I think having the intention and a plan has, has served me well. So yeah, I want to continue to do that. Yes. That's a beautiful thing. I'm, I'm happy yeah. for you. Thanks. Um, and I'm so happy for you. Like the last, I would say the last, uh, especially when we were together in San Francisco, even though it wasn't that much time, like I feel like you have a whole different, you have a whole different like energy and vibe. Like you were, I always, you know, liked hanging out with you, but I feel like I can just feel it with you and, and I can see it and I'm just so, so fucking happy for you. Man. It's just the jacket, man. Yeah. Maybe it's just the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good place to end. <laughs> All right. That's our show. Thank you so much for coming back to Podular Modcast. Thank you to Austin for coming back on the show. Links to all things are Benny in the show description. Thank you to everybody who supports Podular Modcast on Patreon. And if you have any ideas or like some of the ideas that I mentioned in the intro about ways to, uh, you know, get involved with PodMod via the Patreon, then let me know. If you are just interested in supporting the show via Patreon, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Podular Modcast, link in the show description. Thank you to Patchwork Seattle for their continued support. Don't forget they have awesome stuff in their used and vintage section i mean they have cool stuff in their new section too but their cup runneth over as far as the used and vintage stuff goes they also have cool events one coming up this weekend a spooky sound bath so check that out thank you to foreign mess after later audio and novation for their continued support of podular modcast this week's secret word is pelican until next week